before we go on to making more complex things, I want to solidify what I've been talking about as far as outlining the detail of your objects using loops. Because up to now, I've been talking about loops as if they were all the same. And while they might all be made of the same components, sometimes different loops can serve different purposes in our modeling. And so what I've done here is I've outlined some of these different purposes and given them different colors so that you can better visualize what's going on with these models. So these first two examples are pretty simple and things that we've already looked at. We have the coffee cup and our cookie logo. And with the coffee cup, I've added three colors, red, blue, and green, where red represents our perimeter loops. And these are the loops that go around the perimeter of the object's major features. So we have one here at the top, we have a perimeter down here at the bottom, and we also have two perimeters going around the outside of where our handle meets the rest of the cup. Now next to that, I have blue, which is our detail loops. And there's not a lot of detail here in this coffee cup, so I've used them to define the details of our perimeter loops. And the purpose of the detail loops is either to define detail or support detail by surrounding it. Because if this perimeter loop was just connected straight to the top here, then you know we'd get this curve going up and things would be a little bit mixed together. So by having this detail loop going around and defining the detail of the rim, now we've separated out these areas. And lastly, we have the green and the white, and this just represents the fill loops. So these are a little bit less important because they're just filling in the gaps, but they're also defining the silhouette of the object and you know defining the rest of the shape. But as far as importance goes, once you have the perimeter loops and your detail loops, then the rest of your job becomes very easy. So we can see the same thing on this cookie logo here, where we have our perimeter loops going around the outside. Just like that, we have one going around this large curve here, and then we have them crisscrossing here where we want very sharp areas around the cookie bites. So these would be our perimeter loops, and then we are using our detail loops to support those areas. So for example, you know, we, I know we looked at this before, but if we have a pole that's you know, right next to a perimeter, then it's going to start pulling in that direction. And we don't want that. Instead, we want a completely smooth curve going along here. So what we have is a detail loop going along the outside. So the detail loop is pulled a little bit, but we don't really care. And you know, it works out perfectly fine. So our perimeter is completely untouched by that pole, and it's not being pulled or pinched in any direction. So again, this is a fairly simple example because we don't have a ton of detail going on here. So let's look at a little bit more complex example. We've already seen our sports car before, but let's take a second look at it. And here you can see that we have the same thing where we have our perimeter loops, you know, outlining the perimeter of each of these objects. And then we have our detail loops defining the major details of the objects and in some cases supporting the perimeter just like that. And similar to how we made the perimeter of the cookie, if we look at just this door, uh, I selected it and then hit slash on my number pad to go into local view. You can see that we have a really sharp corner right here, a sharp corner there, and a sharp corner there. And since we already know that we want perimeter loops to go around the outside boundary of our objects, then we know that we want a you know, perimeter loop going around here and one going here and they can kind of stop at those sharp edges, but anywhere where it's smooth, it's going to continue on. You know, we have a round corner down here, it's going to continue going forward, and then back to this sharp edge, where it's going to crisscross, just like what happened with our cookie. And then in, in addition to that, we have these areas like this handle, where we have this very specific detail that we want to be you know, pretty particularly shaped, and so we're using a detail loop around that to help support that area, and make sure that it gives it enough breathing room to not be pinched or pulled in any other directions. And then we also have a detail loop defining the sharp detail of the door going backwards and a detail loop going all the way around turning and coming back to make that sharp crease as well. And you can look all the way around this car and see very similar things. And we've already looked at this car before. But I wanted to show you with these different colors to show you, you know, that different loops are serving different purposes here. Now, the distinction between some of these is a little bit arbitrary because, you know, this loop right here could be a perimeter loop or it could be a detail loop. And the distinction isn't really, you know, scientific here because, you know, a loop can serve multiple purposes. 
So I just try to outline things in a way that makes it easy to visualize, but you know, be aware that some of these might also be serving different purposes as well. So our last example here is a human head. And as a beginner, this is probably one of the more difficult things that you could pick to model. But again, I want you to pay attention to these different types of loops. So what's red and blue here is, again, a little bit arbitrary as some of these, you know, this might also be a perimeter loop depending on how you look at it. But overall, you know, we have these loops surrounding all of the important details of the mesh. So we have this perimeter going around the eyes and surrounding it completely. And pretty much any human head that you're going to model, whether it's stylized or realistic, is going to have this same defining loop because it's a defining feature, it's following along with our anatomy, and it's also helping keep all of this detail in here completely localized. Same goes for the loops that separate the mouth from the rest of the chin and from the cheekbone. And we're looking at the perimeter of the jaw and all of these different loops serve these different purposes. Now, if I were to hide the rest of these loops here, and we just look at the red loops first, you know, we can see just by laying these down, we're already getting a good impression of a human head. And a lot of artists like to work this way by first laying down these loops and then filling in the rest of it later. So some people start with a box and add more loop cuts and, you know, create a face gradually like that. And other artists like to go in and make these loops first and then fill in the gaps. So it's definitely personal preference but you can see that if we work this way and we create these loops first, we already get a good impression of how we want to finish off the model because we've already made all of the difficult decisions. So if we do that, you know, it might take us some work to add in the rest of these details because they're also a little bit more complex. But once we have these, then all of our decisions have already been made and we can very quickly fill in the rest of this model with our fill loops. Just like that. And so that's going to define the rest of our silhouette here. And everything else is just filling in a couple grids. So we're getting all of the difficult decisions out of the way first. We're defining the most important features and then working our way down to the areas where we can have a little bit more flexibility and are a little bit less important. And that way our job becomes easier over time instead of more difficult. So mainly I just wanted to show you that different loops can serve different purposes. They can support different features. And if this is a different way of thinking about modeling, I just want you to get used to seeing models this way. And, you know, I'm not going to be outlining models as we go forward or, you know, when you're modeling, you don't necessarily have to be thinking, okay, this is a perimeter loop. This one's a detail loop, but you should always be thinking what purpose does this loop serve? And once you've gotten the most important ones down first, then all of a sudden what looks like a fairly complex object can be broken down into fairly simple steps. And by the end, you're just filling in a couple gaps.